Good morning, beautiful people, and welcome to the School of the Spirit. The School of the Spirit in Oak House Church is popularly known as the Sunday School. Kindly join us as we dig deep into the Word of God this morning. Two, what are the indicators of a blessed man? Number three, the seven types of blessing. Number four, how to trigger the blessing. Remember I told you the first action God took was a blessed man. The last action God took as was living planet Earth was also to bless man. That is why it is important to look at the blessing. In spite of everything that had been given to the disciples, the word of God, the name of Jesus, the anointing, the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, it was still not enough for them to complete their assignment. And if it wasn't enough for the disciples, it's also not enough for you. So let's start with looking at what does it mean to be blessed. I'll quickly help you understand that. It means to provide or activate a supernatural force that enables and empowers a man to succeed against all odds. I'll take it again just in case you're writing. Force, meaning that blessing is beyond the natural. It's not something that can happen to you in the natural. It's a supernatural force acting on a man. So I've defined it as it's to provide or activate a supernatural force that enables or empowers a man to succeed against all odds. Meaning that a blessed man cannot be stopped. It doesn't matter what the economy is saying. That man will succeed against all odds. The Bible talks to us about a man called Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. The Bible said that there was famine in that land. But the Bible says in that same land where there was famine, in fact the Bible uses the word severe famine, in that same land where there was famine, the Bible said that God blessed Isaac and he sowed in that same land and he reaped a hundredfold. That's talking about a blessed man. So the man succeeds against all odds. You need this thing to come on your life. No matter what happens, there's a supernatural enablement. There's a supernatural enhancement. It comes on that man and it enables the man to succeed in spite of whatever it is that is going on around him in the physical. If you take a look at Genesis uh, 17, you see another example there where the Bible was talking about how he was going, God was going to bless a particular man because he came from the lineage of Abraham. His name is Ishmael. Actually, Abraham had gone to God to say, oh, let Isaac live. And then God said to him in Genesis 17, verse 20, he said to him that as for Ishmael, that Genesis 17, 20, he said, as for Ishmael, I will bless him also. Ishmael is a father of the Islamic um, community. So there is a blessing running through them. That blessing came from God and it's because of their attachment to Abraham. He said, as for Ishmael, I will bless him also just as you have asked. So already you're seeing how to be blessed. Somebody went to talk to God and that activated the blessing in the life of Ishmael, even though he didn't necessarily deserve it. He said, now this is the result of the blessing. He said, I will make him extremely fruitful and multiply his descendants. He will become a father of 12 princes and I will make him a great nation. That blessing is still in operation in the descendants of Ishmael. If you go to Dubai, you see it there. If you go to Saudi Arabia, you see it there. Many, many years ago, I don't know what the Saudi Riyadh is right now, uh, but when it was still $200 to a Naira, at that time, it was, sorry, when it was um, 200 Naira to $1, the Saudi Riyadh was counting at 1,000 Naira to 1 Riyadh. Then, you know how long ago it was 200 because I remember checking it then. I'm told I had a client once who was from Saudi Arabia and told me that there is no poor person in Saudi Arabia, not one poor person. He told me how you can go to the bank and, and uh, take a loan. When you go to the bank, he said that you can pay back the loan in 99 years. And you're not going to live for that 99 years. I said, so how about if you die? They said, the moment you die, that loan is canceled. They don't transfer it to your children. And of course, Islam abhors um, what's that word? Now, interest. So they don't even take interest from you. That land is blessed. It's because of a blessing that God released on Ishmael. And he said, there will be a great nation. I, God... ...on your life. That's why we're looking at how to be blessed today. 
because of the economic turbulence that is coming, some people, you're, you're the one that knows the economic turbulence. Some people don't know what you're talking about. They are not involved in all these things you're saying because there is a blessing resting upon them. And so, so many people, if you take a look at the patriarchs, whether it's Abraham, whether it's Isaac, whether it's Jacob, they understood. What you transfer to your children is not cars. What you transfer to them is not house. What you transfer to them is not the land. We didn't hear how Abraham gave Isaac land and all of those things. He might have given him, but the Bible did not take cognizance of those things. What the Bible always tells us is Abraham called his son and he blessed him. He released a blessing on him. And then when it was time for Isaac, Isaac called his sons, Esau and Jacob. You know the story? And he blessed them. Remember the definition of blessing. It enables a man to supernaturally succeed against all odds. It empowers a man. It provides for a man. It lifts a man. If you take a look at Genesis chapter 27, um, if you pick from verse 34, this is when Abraham, um, Isaac was blessing Jacob and Esau. And, you know, when uh, Esau found out that his brother had taken the blessing, the Bible says to us in um, verse 34, when Esau Bless me too, he begged. Why was he begging? Because he knew the power of a blessing. And then verse 35, um, the Bible says Isaac now began to talk to him. And Isaac said, your brother was here and he has tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. But now the Bible tells us in verse 37, he said, Isaac said to Esau, I have made Jacob your master. That's what the blessing can do. It can lift a man supernaturally against all odds. Naturally speaking, Esau is the firstborn. Esau is the advantage one. Esau is the skilled one. But because a blessing came on Jacob, he said, I, through the power of the blessing, has made Jacob older and higher than you, Esau. He will always be above. It's because of the blessing. And then he continued. He said, I have sustained him with corn and wine. If you look at the NLT version, he said, I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. Excuse me. Isaac did not count grain and wine and give to J uh, Jacob. Even if he did, how many bags of rice will he give Jacob? He didn't. So how come he said, I have sustained him. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain or wine. What that means is that it, no matter what the economy is saying, there are people who their food is in reserve. There are people who their fuel is in reserve. If they like, let there be no job on planet Earth. If they like, let it be that their employment is at 100%. No single human being is employed. The Bible says, I have guaranteed him a job. I have guaranteed him corn and wine. Is the power of the blessing. You need this thing in your life. I mean, you don't. Ah. If it comes on the life of a man, if it comes on the life of a church, if it comes on a ministry, that ministry will be flying. People are wondering, how are you doing what you are doing? How is this happening? They don't understand. There's something called the blessing. It guarantees a man abundance in the midst of scarcity. That's what it does. That's why God says, But not the anointing in your life, oh, they need to be blessed. That anointing can be there without the blessing. You will struggle upon that anointing. The blessing makes life easy, smooth. It enables you to do ministry without sweat. You are doing so much, but the evidence is not seen on you. You are just, something is carrying you. It's called the blessing. Let's take a look at some indicators of the blessing. Let's pick, uh, there are so many examples I can pick. Genesis 24. Let's look at what was going on in the life of Abraham. Abraham was now a very old man. I'm going to read verse 1 because of time and then jump to 35. Just the beginning and then the last verse. So the Bible now is telling us the end result of Abraham's life. Remember when we started with him as far back as uh, 12. He has made a journey, a 12 chapter journey. So we saw him in chapter 12. Now we see him again in chapter 24. By this time, the Bible says, Abraham was now very old. Let's see his profile as an old man. And the Lord had blessed him in every way. What does that indicate to you? Some people have a blessing in their marriage. It has not transited to other things. Some have a blessing in one area. It hasn't moved. I know because the Bible says, he blessed him what? In every way. So, some people might have a blessing in some ways. Oh, as for prayer, you can pray. You are blessed with the gift of prayer. Where is the evidence of your prayer life? 
they are blessed with intelligence. Where is the evidence of your intelligence? But the guy said, the Bible says, for this guy called Abraham, he was blessed. How? In every way. Meaning in marriage, he was blessed. In finances, he was blessed. In his health, he was blessed. In everything, he was a blessed man. Now, let me show you the power of this blessing. Do you know that three most popular and most powerful and most populous religions, what did I say? One, most powerful, number two, most popular, number three, most populous. What does it mean most powerful? Even though I don't want to use Christianity as a religion, but for the context of what I'm saying, I'm going to use it as just, you know. So, the most powerful meaning that they are able to activate the most powerful spiritual force, right? Popular means that three, more than three quarter of the earth. In other words, more than 80% of the earth. That's what we're talking about, most popular. And uh, that's most popular. And then the third one I said most popular, that is a lot of people. Okay, popular it is, is known all over. There are some religions that are not known. Example, Hare Krishna. Some people live here don't know about Hare Krishna. But popular means everybody knows about it. But populous means over 80%. The three of them. If you combine these three religions, what are they? Number one is called Christianity. Number two is called Islam. Number three is called Judaism. These three. These three religions cover over 80% of the human population. They all trace their descendants to Abraham. Christians call him Father Abraham. Islam calls him Father Abraham. And then you see Jude, uh, the, the, the Jews call him Father Abraham. It is the result of the blessing. This man was blessed. Above everything you can imagine. And the blessing transcended to today. The Bible said when they were writing in Matthew chapter 1, they were blessed. Two from other people. Jesus, this guy, Abraham, he was blessed. The Bible said he was very old, and this profile is that he was. Now says in verse 35, and the Lord had what? blessing you know that this kind of blessing they said they did what they greatly blessed him and the result is that he became a very wealthy man so the lord had given him flocks of sheep it's not his hard work, though he will work. He said, but this is the one the Lord gave him. Flocks of sheep, the Lord had given him goats, heads of cattle, a fortune of silver and gold, and many male and female servants and camels and donkeys. You know, in those days, it was uh, beasts of burden they used for transportation. But today, I mean, you won't really necessarily have goats and blah, 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 but you have cars. So I'm thinking the guy had jet planes, he had cars, he had all of those things. Right? So you see the jurisdiction of the man's blessing is an indicator. You see all of the things that the blessing does, right? It acts upon if, if, if a womb is blessed, they will have so many children, they won't know what to do with them. If a business is blessed, nothing can go wrong. Yeah? Okay. So let me quickly run to um, another uh, whatever. Let's take a look. Now, in the Old Testament, the indicators of blessing had to do with the physical properties that they had. But in the New Testament, the dynamics are slightly different. In the New Testament, it's beyond what a man can see physically. The blessing is carried on the inside, which I'm going to show you now. But there are Christians that are carrying the blessing on the inside, but they don't know how to trigger the blessing on the inside. Example, we have the power of God on the inside, but most people do not know how to trigger the power of God. That's the same thing with the blessing. The blessing is inside, but you don't know how to activate or how to trigger the blessing of God. So let's take a look at Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. We're looking at the indicators of blessing. I've told you in the Old Testament, I use Abraham as an example. I use Isaac as an example. We, we read Genesis 26 where I told you that Isaac was sowing in the land that was, you know, a land of farming. But the Bible says he reaped a hundredfold. To the extent, if you read that Genesis 26, to the extent that the Philistines envied him. The owners of the land envied him. It's like going to the U.S. and then you are so rich that the U.S. citizens are envying you. That's what's going on with Isaac. So these are indicators of blessing. But let's pull it to um, 
New Testament. What is the indicator of the blessing? New Testament. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. The Bible says, but Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. That means everyone that is not born again is naturally under a curse. And what is the curse? The specific curse right now is a curse of the law. What does that mean? These are people who are struggling to please God by do's and don'ts. They have to follow a set of laws. They have to follow a set of rules. And the truth is that they're not, they're not even able to keep all those laws. So the Bible says that there is a curse because you are trying to accomplish these things on your own. So there is a curse. So what the Bible says is that Christ has rescued us from the curse that is pronounced by the law. When he hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoings. So in other words, when Jesus hung on the cross, he was taking your place. So meaning that the curse that was pronounced upon you was lifted. Let's look at the next verse. Verse 14 now captures the um, blessing. He said, through Christ Jesus, God has blessed the Gentiles. Did you see what he said there? He didn't say God will bless. What did he say? God has blessed. Who are the Gentiles? Those people who believe in Jesus, but they are not Jews. He said, God has blessed the Gentiles. I want you to say to yourself, I'm already blessed. I am already blessed. I am already blessed. You have to believe it. He said, God has blessed what? The Gentiles. With what? With the same blessing he promised Abraham. So that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. So that thing that was acting upon the life of Abraham is also acting upon your life. Question, why is it not in operation? In the life of Abraham, we saw he had cattle, he had... Oh. That whatever age, men, kings were still looking at her. So how come the same blessing... <clears throat> that is on Abraham, is on you. The Bible says God has blessed the Gentiles with the same blessing he promised Abraham. So the moment you get saved, there is a blessing already in operation in your inside. Remember I told you, in the Old Testament, you have to see the cattle, shoe, and bag, all those things. But in the New, you are a carrier of the blessing of God. You are the container that carries the blessing of God. I've talked to you a lot about what the blessing can do. If you understand the power of the blessing, you'll pay any price to get it. It eliminates struggle from your life. The reason a lot of Christians are struggling is because though they are carriers of the blessing, they do not know how to activate, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. But another good question here is, okay, so what exactly did God promise Abraham? I think I've shown you a lot of the things that God promised Abraham, but let's even look at the scripture. Galatians 3, 8 to 9 tells you about that promise. He said the scripture foresaw, especially if you can have it from NIV version. I like how it captures it in NIV version. Galatians 3, we're going to read 8 and 9. So the scripture foresaw that God will justify the Gentiles by faith. In other words, you are made right by faith, by believing in Jesus, not by what you did or what you didn't do. So the Bible says that God foresaw it, right? And announced the gospel in advance to Abraham. So Abraham believed God, right? He was counted righteous because he believed God, right? Not because of what he did or what he didn't do. So the Bible says all nations will be blessed through you. That is what God told Abraham. So the Bible said that that same blessing they gave Abraham, that same blessing has been given to you. You are carrying, meaning that wherever you go, you carry the blessing. It is not Lagos that is blessed or cursed. It is you. There are men wherever they go, they will prosper irrespective of the city they go to. If you like, take them. Take them to Jalingo. They will prosper there. If they like, let them say that no rain on this earth. Those people are different because they are carriers of the blessing. And not just that. Anywhere they go, that place is dry. All of a sudden, water begins to come around there. That's what they promised Abraham. That all nations of the earth will be blessed through you. Hallelujah. Alright, let me run to the seven types of blessing. It's vital you put, take this. So I, I will try to be done in like 10 minutes. How many of the course of what have we covered in the course outline? Number one, we've done what does it mean to be blessed, correct? What else have we done? Indicators of blessing in the Old Testament and indicators of blessing in the New Testament. Do you not know the difference? What's the difference? In the New Testament, how do you know a man is blessed? In the old, physical world. In the new, how do you know? The man carries the blessing. The only difference now is that he may not know how to trigger it. 
And this is interesting because that means I'm blessed. I am what? There's a foundational blessing already going with me. The point is, do I now know how to trigger it? Okay, so let's go to the next thing on our agenda. Let's take a look at um, the types of blessing. There are actually seven types of blessing. So you need to be able to tap into one or the other. One I've already mentioned, you already must have guessed by now, the covenant blessing, meaning is an automatic blessing for every believer. Once you give your heart to Christ, you are already blessed. That's what the Bible says when we read in Galatians chapter 3, verse 14. I read it already. He said he redeemed us in order that the blessing, blessing, given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus. So what it means is that the moment you get born again, that blessing, what? It rests on you already. Don't you need this thing? Ah, This thing that made Isaac so in a land that was dry. And he did not reap one fold or two fold. He reaped a hundred fold. You don't want it. I do. So, and the Bible is telling me now that there are seven types. Some people who are wise know how to activate all seven. Because Abraham activated all seven. So the quality of your blessing, the quality of the blessing on your life, it depends on how many of these blessings you are able to activate. Or you are able to draw into your life. So the first one is the one we've been discussing since, which is what? The covenant blessing is called the automatic blessing, which is the moment you give your life to Christ, that covenant comes into operation in your life immediately. The same thing that was on the life of Abraham. Calling this man father. In fact, Christians and Muslims were arguing, he's our father. Islam will say, he's our father. Because of what the way one man lived with God. So, let's take a look at the second type of blessing. It is called the blessing by God. Blessing of God by obedience. The blessing that comes by obedience. Let's look at the blessing of God how to be blessed. So, we've said the first one when you get born again. The second one is obedience. Genesis 20, uh, Deuteronomy 28. So, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all, all the, the nations, nations on the earth. Let's look at verse 2. I'm going to read 2 and 3. He said, all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey who? The Lord your God. So there is a blessing that comes on a man for obeying the word of God. So that means one way to trigger the blessing of God is to go to my Bible and become a doer of the word. Become a man of obedience. Your life is blessed. You see this coming economic hardship? They're not talking to you. You don't know what they're talking about. Lack, you don't know what they're talking about. As you're picking up things, God is supplying because there is a blessing resting on you. So when you choose to disobey God all the time, what you are doing is you are robbing yourself of the blessing. Let's look at number three. Okay, okay. let's even... No, but okay, see, so let's do it. We can pull to verse 5. You will be blessed in the city and you'll be blessed in the country. In other words, if you like, go to the village, you'll be blessed. If they chase you to London, you'll be blessed. If they chase you to America, you'll be blessed. If they chase you to Elori, you'll be blessed. Wherever you go, you'll be blessed. You know, some people, all these Japan they are doing, I just laugh at them very well. When I travel and I see them struggling, how did you come? I was sharing, I don't know which group I was sharing with. I went to the US. The man that carried my things, what do you call this people that carry your, the bellboy, the porter that carried my thing in America. I noticed he was Nigerian. We always, we know ourselves. So I said, oh, he said, uh, I said, oh, you're Nigerian? I said, ah, yes. He said, speaking about to me. And I said, okay, so how long have you been here? He said, ah, I've been here for seven years. Seven years. And you are still here carrying my bag. He's not the nation you went, if you like. If the blessing is not an oppression in your life, if you like go to White House, the cops will follow you there. Then I said that's not enough. The other man I saw, the one that was, he said he's the manager. I said, manager of what? He's the floor manager. You know these people that manage the floor to make sure that 
everything goes well, the line is not too long, all of that. He's a manager. He had been there in the U.S. 15 years because I asked him. That's what he's still doing 15 years later. He's not U.S. He's not London. He's not Canada. Some people say, let me go to Canada. Nigeria is bad. You see in this nation, there are people that will prosper in this Nigeria. In fact, the more you go, better for us. So there will be more jobs available. There's something about the blessing. He said, you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed where in the country. Wherever you go, the blessing follows you. The other day I was outside one place. I saw one man in the cold. You know, cold in the ocean is spiritual. God, that thing cannot be normal. It went inside your brain and reset your brain to default setting. No part of your skin must be exposed. Even if it's just one line of your skin, the cold is not what you can... What, I don't know how to describe it. This man was outside. He was selling something outside and his hands were exposed. So he made me stop and say, ah, I was just staring at him. Then he looked at me and saw I was in Nigeria. He said, ah, I said, speaking, I don't know whether I look you over. I said, speaking, yeah, yeah. I said, ah, ah. So, how long have you been there? He told me one long years. And you are still here, sending boy outside in the cold. I said, Uncle, why don't you go back to Nigeria? He said, I've left for some time. How will I tell people? What will I do? How will I tell people that this is my level at this point? It's not the Jaguar. People are making a mistake. Go. It's not the Jaguar. You know this food that Jaguar, Jaguar, by the way, means you are traveling. When you travel, I don't know whether you know you start all over again. I don't know whether you know that there's no metamorphosis in the plane. A lizard in Nigeria will not become an alligator in America. I hope you know that. Because metamorphosis does not occur in the plane. Maybe British Airways, you go and enter first class there. As you're coming there and become an alligator. No. If you are a lizard here, if you are not succeeding in your own country, where you can beg money from somebody and say, oh, Gauzo, I beg, later I'll give you back. Is it when you go to US, nobody will have time for you. Where are you going to succeed? Then you start learning their culture. Of course, somebody, one of these people that went to London, traveled to London. In one month, they had, they had given her, what's this, like, um, they had banned her from driving for the next 12 years. You have only stayed one month. You know the person? She has stayed two weeks, sorry. She stayed two weeks in London, only two weeks. They banned her, withdrew her. They said for the next 10 years, don't drive again. What is she, you know Nigeria, there's no speed limit. So she entered the road and she started speeding. They stopped her, arrested her. They say, you are speeding. I know they'll take your picture. The next thing, you just sit in your house with your address. So when the picture got to the house, the sister said, you that you just came. Let me say it's me. You know, we all look alike today. Let me say it's me. After all, it's the same address. So the sister was the one that now, you know, and it was the sister's car anyway. So the sister took the blame and they put it on her license just so that her own CD, real criminal, would not be caught. So the following week she entered, Ashonda driving slowly. They now arrested her for driving slowly. So she now said, oh, what's wrong with you people? Last week you arrested me for speeding. And now you're arresting me for being slow. The policeman just went to the system. Like, I'm sorry, ma'am. There is no record of you being arrested last week. So what exactly are you talking about? No, no, I'm just joking. No, ma'am, you're not joking. So that's how they found that she impersonated her sister, impersonated blah, blah, blah. They withdrew her license 10 years. You have just landed two weeks. They withdraw your license for 10 years. You think, it's, you know, in Nigeria, would they arrest? They will just say, you say, oh, God, I beg now. I beg. How do we settle? Come, come. Psst, psst. You know, like we, I wish to join, when we get to a line of heaven, you know, the line of people going to hell fire. You just tell one angel, psst, bros, guy, guy, come. The angel will look around and say, me? Yes. You too, they do. Then the other will now come and say, oh God, as I see this thing, so it'll be like, say, how are we going to settle it? He said, what do you mean? He said, ah, ah, ah. how do we settle this thing, this matter? The angel will say, I don't understand. He said, bros, you today, do just tell me what's, what's. Wherever you go, you are blessed. Hallelujah. So the blessing of obedience. Let's look at the third one. The parental blessing. We're looking at the seven types of blessing. First one, blessing of covenant, automatic blessing of believers. Number two, blessing that comes by obedience. Number three, the parental blessing. This is what Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, any reasonable person knows about the blessing. There is a blessing.
you bless the heart of your parents in such a way that it can confer a blessing on you. There is a parental blessing. One of the things a parental blessing does is it makes you prosper and do well. It also gives you long life. Remember, it's, a, uh, it's one of the commandments. He said, if you want to do well, then make sure you honor your father and mother. But let's look at Genesis 49 verse 1. Then Jacob called his sons and said, gather around and I can tell you what will happen to you. And then in verse 28, the Bible says, see what happened 28, just so that we don't read everything. 28, he said, all these 12 tribes of Israel, all these are the 12 tribes of Israel. And this is what their father said to them when he blessed them giving each the blessing appropriate to him. He gathered them and he released the parental blessing. Some of you are not talking to your parents. Some of you have annoyed your parents. There are some people you can't allow to be angry with you. It will affect you in life. If you like go to Kafanchan, you have problems with your parents, it will affect you. You're going to lose out on this blessing. Let me run quickly. Number four, the pastoral blessing. The power of the parental blessing is there. But there's also the power of the pastoral blessing. The pastoral blessing opens you up to other dimensions. And the um, blessing of the father opens you up to another dimension. If the father is prophetic, remember, let me do a distinction. There is a difference between the office of the father and the person of the father. Does that make any sense to you? The office of the father is what is blessing you. The man might be a drunkard. The man might be a Muslim. The man might be a Hare Krishna. Anything he like, let him be. What is blessing you is that office. The office is what is blessing you. So some of you, you ignore the, 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 the father. He says it's not born again. He doesn't speak in tongue. No, it's the office. The man steps into his office. And if the man is a prophetic man like Jacob, if he's a prophetic man, he's able to not just release a, a, a random blessing. He's able to pull from the realm of the spirit and release the appropriate blessing for you. Before my dad died, he knew he was dying. One of the things he did, he called me and he began to bless me. Because I was the only one in the hospital with him. So some of you that have parents, you abandon them. You won't call them. You don't care what's happening to them. You are cheating yourself. So let's take a look at the pastoral blessing. Um, okay, Deuteronomy 33 verse 1. I need to run very quickly now. Deuteronomy 33 verse 1. I wish I had the time to open what the pastoral blessing does because it triggers a different set of blessing from what the, the father's blessing does. But we don't have that time. So see, he said, this is the blessing that Moses, the man of God, he stood in his office as a priest, as a prophet, as a pastor. He said, this is the blessing that the man of God pronounced upon the Israelites before his death. Why did he pronounce on the Israelites? He pastored them. He was their prophet. So he released the blessing. I wish I could open up what each of them, what they do, because all of them carry different things. There's this one. There's the anointing. It is in this one you can get the spirit of the man. It is in this one. Remember what they said? He said, God took the spirit that is upon Moses, put upon the 70 elders. The beautiful things that he did it immediately. It's the same thing in operation here. That's how you carry the thing that is resting on the man. So the Bible says to us, let's read that, Matthew chapter 10. Now, one of the things they give you for your office, right, is something called your own blessing. Let me, Pastor, so let me use you as an example. Yes, please come. God bless you. So see, when you are called into ministry, right, for you to function, there are many things God will give you. Example, he gives you the anointing. Without the anointing, can you do ministry? No. Then he now gives you, he gives you favor. Because without favor, you can't do it. People need to like you, so they listen to what you are doing. If you don't have favor as a minister, I'm sorry for you. So he gives you all of those things. Do you know that one of the things that God gives us in ministry is what is called our blessing to release to others? I'm going to show you from the scripture. So whatever you pronounce on the life of men, the Bible says, give them your blessing. This one is not the blessing of God. This one is the blessing of the minister. It is at the jurisdiction of the minister and it's one that comes from the heart. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Matthew 10, 5, quickly. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. Matthew 10, 5. Then Jesus sent out, then these this 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. 
do not go among the Gentiles or enter any of the Samaritan cities. So Jesus will send them on assignment. Let's look at verse 11 quickly because of time. Verse 11. Pay attention. He said, when whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. Right? Let's look at the next verse. Verse 12. When you enter the home, give it what? Let's look at the King James, the NLT of it. All the King James. NLT is good. If it turns out to be a worthy home, let what? Did he say let God's blessing? Let what? Your blessing. So like I showed Pastor Uzo now, among your paraphernalia, apart from the anointing or whatever it is they gave you, they also gave you something called your blessing. It is a gifting you can put on the life of a man. Look at it. They said, if it turns out to be worthy, let your blessing stand. In other words, let your blessing rest. You can give it, you can take it back. It is a privilege of the priesthood. The privilege of the priesthood. When they say, come and serve God, some of you are doing anyhow. You don't know the privilege of a priesthood. You know what the Bible says? I am reading yesterday. He said, those who use the office of a deacon, well, either deacon, deacon, he said, you purchase for yourself a good degree. Then I asked myself, okay, so those who don't use the office of a deacon or deacon as well, what's not happening to them? It's problem. <coughs> you see people today, they say they are going to be pastor or they anoint them. The following afternoon, I'm no more doing it again for one reason or the other. You are destroyed. It's not me saying it. And then there's something the Bible now says. He said, if you put your hand on the plow, you look back. He said, you're not fit for the kingdom. Do you know what that means? Even when you now change your mind to now come back, you are not fit. So every other thing you are doing after that is called dead works. It's Bible. You are no more qualified. You are disqualified. There are things people do, they disqualify them. They disqualify Saul. 17 years, he sat on the throne, but he was a rejected man. May that not be your portion, though. I was watching the ordination service of uh, this new pastor, Fountain of Life. You know when the elders, the presbytery, they began to pray. I don't care what you think. He went dreadful. He did, 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 did. That was before they ordained him. Oh. The moment the presbytery came and they laid hands on those people, something transferred. You speak against him, you speak against God directly. If the, the Bible says, whatever you agree on earth is agreed in heaven. So the presbytery sat down and they chose. Whether you, you agree or not, they chose. From that moment, you seal your lips or you doom yourself. The privilege of the priesthood is another conversation later. He said, let you, what? Your blessing. So there is a pastoral blessing. Let me look at another scripture. I'm running. Uh, Hebrews 13 verse 17. Hebrews 13 17. Make sure this is not happening to you. There are, I think I told the women, there are people you can't fight and win. There are people you can't fight and survive. One is your parents in the physical. The other, your spiritual parents. He said, obey your spiritual leaders. Do what they say. Their work is to watch over your soul and they are accountable to God. So God is going to hold us accountable. However, he said, give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would not be to your benefit. What does that mean? If your pastor sorrows over you, cries over you, or is grieved over you, do whatever it takes to correct that thing. You won't go scot-free. There are some things we take lightly. This is one of the destroyers of men. If you like, what this thing does is that you see people, they build, 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 build. something will scatter it. Nothing they do works. Even if that thing is working today, tomorrow, some unexplained force will scatter that thing. He said, it's not to your benefit. Look at how he put it in the King James part of it. He said, it is unprofitable for you. Meaning that if the heart of the man that leads you, blesses you, make sure you get that man to be happy with you. It's not what you just do, Kelly. Ah, that's his business. That's pastor's business. If you like, no. You are ruining your, you are robbing yourself of a blessing. He says, obey them and have the rule over you and submit yourself for the watch for your soul as they that might give account. Okay, that's the part of the pastor. Your own pattern called that they may do it with joy and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. Don't say it doesn't matter. Bible, New Testament, Hebrews, Paul, he said, it will not be to your benefit. 
if that man is grieved over, if I tell you I'm going to report you to God, <laughs> if a minister leaves your presence not happy with you, that, don't treat that thing lightly. It destroys people. It brings cancer of the spirit, of the soul, of the body, of the finance. You'll be wondering what is going on. Some of you, this is what it is. Then some will go, they go to one church, they go and grieve the pastor, they run away to another church. If you like, run to Atlanta, it won't solve the problem, it will come after you. You can't go behind and talk about the pastor and think you'll be normal. You won't. Oh, God bless you, let it be the one that is praying for you. The one that is loving you. If he's a smart pastor, he will love you, pray for you. As he's doing that, coals are being heaped on your head. I know what has brought me here. I understand the secret of the game. I understand the secret of the game. You see that my pastor, Pastor David? Ha! I made sure. He never had any cause to grieve. That he's thinking of something. He's just thinking about it. That thing is sorted. He doesn't need to complete the sentence. He's sorted. To the point that in the spirit now, honestly, go and check. I've preached this message now. I didn't have a conversation with him. We watch him in the next one week. This same message was going to preach. Anybody that's of that, what is the same thing? I don't know how that for years has been happening. If he preaches something, I may not listen to him till today. I'll mention this thing. The next, in fact, there are some, they'll come and tell me. He said, word for word, exactly what just me saying. Word for what is what he just taught. Same scripture. Somebody said, I won't believe you of you again. You will have meeting in the secret. Then you come and whatever. It's not. There is something in the realm of the spirit. You see this thing. If you know how many people that destroy. All right. Let me give you one. How many have I given you? Okay. I'll mention the other two, but I won't um, deal with it. Five, generational blessing. This one comes to those who progenitor serve God. Your father, your mother serve God is a generational blessing. Psalm 112, you know that scripture. I'm going to end it here. Okay, I'll mention the sixth one. Blessing by association. Proverbs 13, 20 says to us, walk with the wise, become wise. Associate with fools and get into trouble. I think that captures that. And then the seventh one is godly actions. There are specific actions you take, you'll be blessed. Example, the Beatitudes. I don't have the time to go into other. The Beatitudes. How do you trigger a blessing? One, be born again. I'm just going to mention them one by one. One, be born again. Two, obey God's word of righteousness. Number three, touch the hearts of blessers. Father, pastors, whatever. Touch their hearts. Number four, serve God's purpose and serve his agenda. Remember Obededon? The ark of the Lord, 2 Samuel 6, 11. The ark of the Lord remained there in Obededon's house for three months. The Lord blessed Obededon and his entire house. What did Obededon do? He, the ark, he hosted the ark. Serve God's purpose. Serve God's purpose. Serve God's agenda. And you will see the blessing of God upon your life and destiny. Okay, besides school of spirit, about 10 minutes after 9, so I'm still within the one hour range. So today we just captured how to be blessed. And we saw that the first action God took on man was to bless man. The last action God took on man as he left was also to bring a blessing to man. And we saw what the blessing does. We saw that because Isaac was blessed by God, he sowed in the land and he reaped. He sowed in a land where there was severe famine, but he also reaped. The Bible said because there was a blessing on his life. And then we looked at indicators of blessing in the Old Testament. We looked at indicators of blessing in the New Testament. And then we went on to look at how the seven types of blessing can we look at them number one type of blessing covenant automatic blessing for believers but that one can be in operation and you know how to trigger number two blessing by obedience which we saw when you obey god of course it triggers a blessing Deuteronomy 28 the parental blessing okay number three number four pastoral blessing number five generational blessing how do you trigger generational blessing it is if your progenitor served God. I went to study the U.S. politics. George Bush, his, there are two families that have produced two presidents, right? The Bush family and the Kennedy family. And I went to look at Bush family. Their progenitor was a pastor, was a man. Even the Bush himself was born again. These are 
the children of pastor, they serve God. And God blessed them by putting two of his descendants as leaders in that place. And I went and looked at the powerful families. You know, the Kennedy family, I was reading what their progenitor did to the Catholic church. He made sure it was established and all of that. So people that are served, the Bible said that the seed of the righteous will be blessed. They will be mighty upon the land, right? So it is a generational blessing. So if you serve God, your children are already going to be blessed. Not because of what they did, but this thing is working for them. And what's the next one? Blessing by what? Association. Can you run your mind through the Bible and pick an example for me? Even though I read the scripture, but pick an example. Hmm? Who? Was he blessed by association? Answer is yes. He benefited from the blessing that was operating in the life of Abraham just by association. To the extent he became so rich that him and Abraham began to quarrel. Abraham understood the blessing. That's why he didn't quarrel with him. He said, no problem. Go anywhere you go, go. Me, I'll take the other the direction. Because he knew the blessing is not in the land. The blessing is in me. I'm carrying the blessings. So anywhere I go, that thing will multiply. Amen. And the last one, those godly action, like example, beatitude, blessed are the meek, X, Y, Z, blessed are this, blessed are that. Okay, in your opinion, which one do you think is the most powerful? Hmm? Covenant blessing. Now, this world, all of us in this world, we have covenant blessing and we are not showing forth. It might be, yeah, it's a powerful one, yeah, but many, these other ones can hinder it. It's a foundation. These other ones can hinder it because you might have covenant blessing, but you're insulting your pastor, you are not talking to your father, and you are not obeying God. So, you see that that one will not work. So, apart from the foundational one, which one do you think is the most powerful? Some people say obedience, some people say what? Generational blessing. Obey. It will cause what will happen. Is that the most powerful? Okay, well, let me say this, right? All of them, to be honest, triggers a different thing. What you get from your pastoral blessing, you will not get it from the uh, fatherly blessing unless your father is also your pastor right <laughs> there's something just i don't have the time there's also if i expand it more there are actually 12 types but i knew i won't have time i capture seven one of them is a blessing of your what do you call that your head your husband there's a blessing that comes when i go to minister you think the, so when i was going to minister, i'll just enter plane and be going that plane <laughs> like that i'll say it will just have a hole only me will die inside the plane the plane will be going they won't even know that somebody sat there the place there will just be one big hole before I go for any ministration, I make sure that the blessing of my husband is released on my life. He said, go. Nothing will happen to you. If the plane, if the turbulence on earth, like, nothing will happen. He said, and when you speak, the lives of many bless. Blah, blah, blah. Whether he's a minister or he's a house boy, yo, for the fact that he's your head, let him release that blessing. There are about 12 types of blessing. Only capture say, okay, now I'm giving you the eighth one. Amen. So can you talk to God where you have head in this area? Ask God for mercy. You need the blessing of God as we go ahead in life. Talk to God. Thank Him for the word. Where have you heard? And then I begin to target some of these blessings. Begin to target it. I'm going to make sure that I get the blessing of obedience. I'm going to get the blessing of my parents. I'm going to get the blessing that comes from my pastor. I'm going to get the blessing that comes from obeying God. From walking in righteousness. Nothing prevents you from tapping into all seven. Nothing. Nothing prevents you. Nothing prevents you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for teaching us these things. Help us to do. Help us to put into practice the things you have taught us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That brings our school of spirit to a close. In five minutes, we'll start the main service. God bless you. Thank you for joining us in the course of the school of the spirit. We're about to start the main service. Why don't you sit back, relax, and join us as we go into the main service today.